Hello everyone, welcome to the session looking at passive protection. And I have a range of different products in front of me that can be used in fire protection in a building. Now some of these you would use to protect a structural element to prevent it from getting too hot, protecting timber from charring, etc. Or other products may be used to try to prevent fire spread from one zone to another. In reality, fire um, protection, passive protection is often done very badly. A lot of money is gets, um, gets spent and to be honest much of it is wasted because of either bad um, specifications, bad installation or just bad products. So be very careful when it comes to passive protection. First you make sure there is a test certificate available and also the test certificate matches what you're doing. It often we have a product and it has the name fire in it somewhere so we apply it in our structure thinking now that we've made something fire safe where it was tested under different with a different geometry different conditions and all sorts of other different conditions and now we expect it to magically make our steel sheeting a firewall or, or something like that so be very careful and get some sort of technical advice before um, yeah finalizing your, speci uh, your specifications and also make sure that there are decent um, quality control procedures and inspections being done. So I'm going to have a look at some of these and then we're going to take them to the lab after this and uh, burn some of them. So there are various different products that you can use for various different things. For instance, often with um, protecting steelwork, there are various paint and epoxy systems that can be used. Now these as intramescents, they would expand and then um, provide passive protection to the, the steel or the concrete. And then you can also get various spray-on products, whether it's a, a vermiculite or, or sort of paint-on product. You also get boards made out of these different systems, some of them cementitious based and based out of various products. So as I said, they, they may come in a board form or they may come in a um, spray-on form. And so these would provide an insulation layer to so a barrier layer to prevent the heat coming through, whereas an intramescence or the, the various different products, they might be painted on or applied and then they provide a swelling layer to, to protect it. Now, uh, you can even have, for instance, timber. Here is an intramescent paint on top of a timber. We're going to put it in front of some heat just now so you can see what may happen to it. And some of these products perform well, some of them don't. So uh, just be careful of them, make sure that you, you've tested it and uh, then the paint activates and provides some level of protection and some alternative products put on some cardboard. So uh, if you're also trying to have a look at fire stopping, although this is not normally part of a structural engineer's um, requirements, but the, the fire engineer would normally be doing that, there are various other systems. You've got a, a hole in your wall and you've got a, a pipe going through. You have collars that you can install around and then if the uh, uh, pipe burns away this will expand and close off the opening such that then it will prevent the fire from going through and so you've got various different sizes and you need to make sure that the, these are properly anchored to the wall otherwise they just fall out and then uh, you've pretty much wasted your time. You have um, pieces that you can even wrap around pipes or wrap around services and then use these to close off systems. Some fire stopping products um, come in, in various different formats and these would be used to either close up openings or joints or various other items. Um, around cables and uh, yeah, penetrations you may sort of seal them up with a sort of a composite system. Once again, just need to make sure that nothing involved in sort of fire stopping of those um, areas is combustible and it, it you know, does what it's required to do. If, for instance, you have things such as plug boxes in a, a wall, you've got a, a firewall and you've got a plug box, which is obviously not fire aided, you have various putties that you can put around it and then uh, use that to, to protect it and then at least this gets a certain amount of protection and then prevents the, the fire from coming through if, if correctly installed. And uh, just as a note, sort of ancillary to this, often with, when you have a fire door, you have a penetration which is called a lock and a handle. And many people kind of forget that they have this beautiful two hour or one hour fire rated door and there's a penetration where the handle is or a, a nice electronic lock and it just melts through the plastic lock and then uh, you have a path straight for the fire through. So uh, yeah, as I said, a whole variety of products. Uh, you even just uh, as, a, as an example, you can even get coatings for cables 
and uh, this is an ablative coating so the main aim of this is to try to prevent the fire from spreading down your cable and taking the fire 50 meters down your uh, factory so this would prevent fire spread but this wouldn't protect the cable necessarily it may be a short-lived fire it would but if there's a longer term fire your cable will still get cooked in this and so if this is an emergency cable you're in big trouble so you need to look also carefully what is carrying information that is needed in an emergency and what is not. If the cable can get cooked and replaced, okay, fine. If that's an emergency cable for your lifts or whatever it is, your um, communication system or your fire alarm, make sure that there's a different product applied to it so that you don't lose your cables um, as well. So that gives a bit of an overview of some of the products. A very brief, there's a large amount of systems available out there. So just get some technical advice, make sure you know what you're doing and uh, get proper specifications in. Now that you've seen the products, we're going to test them on our HTRIS, a high intensity radiant panels going to about 900 degrees Celsius, set up built by a student Aidan Butter. And now you're going to see what happens when they are subjected, these products, to high intensity heat fluxes. This is not official testing, this is purely to show you what happens to the products. First up with the testing, we have the more boring products. Here we've got the cementitious and vermiculite based products. And you will see in these two quick um, speeded up tests that nothing happens to them. They're designed to be inert and then you subject them to heat and they provide a barrier to the heat and a low conductivity so that whatever's inside uh, does not get hot. And you simply need to then specify the thickness of the product and also make sure that it's, it's a applied in such a way that it doesn't fall off, that it stays secure throughout the length of the test or whatever you require to have um, protected. He'll see the ablative coating being tested and all that happens to the cable is that the outer layer chars, the inner slowly melts but doesn't catch fire. And then if there are any cracks that open up, a bit of molten material will seep out. But the main thing is that the, the cable doesn't spread the fire down its length. Here's the timber with the intramesin paint on the top being tested. Now this paint product is still under development and you'll see it's not fully effective. It does swell a bit, but not enough to actually protect the timber. And what eventually happens when we move the radiant panels closer is that the sample actually ignites and you have flaming across the surface. So this needs to intramesin much more to provide a thicker uh, protective layer to the timber. Here you'll see two intramescents on steel samples underneath with different layers and then these activate, swell, provide a thick layer and then they keep the steelwork cooler underneath and it does require a couple of hundred degrees Celsius normally before these products activate and swell and also one thing you, if you test them is they really are not the most pleasant smells that come off of them. the gases can be quite noxious. Here the pipe collar is being tested and you'll see it swell up and gradually close off the, the hole in the middle. Now the way we test it isn't 100% right, you need to get a lot more heat into that sample and then it would, would close up. But at least you can see how this intermittent really grows and eventually would prevent then the fire from coming through the middle of that opening once the, the pipe has melted away. The product here is for sealing around openings and floors and walls. And as long as you have a, well, firstly, you need to have a non-combustible substrate. So that foam or the, the sort of spongy material you see in the middle must not um, be able to burn. Sometimes it can. And then the intermescent on top activates and provides protective layer to the system. And you'll just see how much some of these systems can expand. That was a thin film in the beginning. And by the end, it was about 60 mils thick. Here you'll see a piece of cardboard being protected and that's not really the normal use. You don't want to protect cardboard, but it's just to show the product and how it behaves. And initially the, the cardboard doesn't actually catch fire. The, the outer paint swells, provides a, a protective coating. And uh, eventually what happens is the cardboard around the edge heats up sufficiently to catch fire. But you can see how it's it working. The reason it's shaking up and down because we had the extraction system going a little bit strong, so it started waving the, uh, the the sample.
you'll see an epoxy being treated. So this is specifically designed for high performance applications, petrochemical facilities and the likes. The, the epoxy is somewhat flexible, so you can bend it a little bit. And this you would provide a, a, provide a sort of fairly thick coating on top of industrial vessels and the likes. And then it, it slowly chars or intermessens around the outside and overall provides a long-term barrier to, to quite severe environments. Here's a plug box being tested with a putty, a fireproofing putty placed on the inside. Now we are testing this intentionally in the wrong way. This, always think about fireproofing as a system. So the putty on the inside provides great fire resistance, but as we currently have it here, it's not protected from the outside. So the, the plastic will just be exposed, melt, and then you'll actually see the whole thing deform. You would have needed to have this melt uh, mounted within a wall of fire stopping boards with a hole in it and then this behind. But if the systems are not well, quite correctly installed and the fire can get through to the more susceptible plastic box, then yeah, you lose the fireproofing that was, was required. So just be careful and always think of fireproofing as an entire system and not just a product that you apply. Here you'll see the strip of intermessent material that can be wrapped around pipes to seal uh, penetrations and you'll see how quite significantly this, this expands to close any holes it's placed into. Now that you've seen all these products in use, just some final comments just to summarize and well, some things to think about as well. Firstly, now that you've seen them activate and uh, products being used, just be careful in terms of surface preparation because many of the products, even if they work well, if they are not correctly applied, they may simply peel off and be totally ineffective then. Also, be careful what you put underneath or on top of products because it may prevent them from activating. Or if you put, for instance, a suitable intermessent on top of a well, non-suitable undercoat, the undercoat may just melt away before the intermessent activates and once again everything will, will peel off. Once again also some things may not be suitable on top of your product so just be very careful in terms of um, putting everything together. Then know how your products work and what their limitations are. Every single product has limitations and the projects are not magic. They can't make a bad design good. They can simply do what they were designed for and assuming that they were correctly designed and, and correctly manufactured and installed etc. And uh, if any of those factors are missing you've got a problem, especially when it comes to installation or if people are claiming performance that is actually not true. And a final thing, the system needs to be fire rated, not only the product. So whenever you use a product in a penetration or on a steel structure or concrete or wherever it is, the entire system is what counts. And any weak point in the overall system will then cause the system to fail. Uh, you may have a beautiful wall that is all fire rated, but you have a big penetration that fails in the middle of it, well then it's not going to form a compartmentation function. So hope you found this quite informative. I, I find I learn quite a lot by testing products and just seeing what happens and then from that you get a much under better understanding of what can and can't be done with these sorts of products and hope you can apply this in the future. Thank you.